RV life is not for everyone. Do you have what it takes? Find out next. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. I'm a full-time RVer. I've been on the road almost five years. And in that time, I've met more than a few people who are ill-suited for this life. I met a man standing outside his motorhome in the campground, and he was telling me that he and his wife had tried RV life for a year and were now quitting and was now selling this motorhome. This was a huge motorhome, and it had a lot of damage on the side. And he said he kind of lost his cool, and he scraped this barrier. And I was like, well, how long is this motorhome? home he said 45 feet why did you get something so big and he said I wanted to be as far apart from my wife as possible and I was like oh my goodness so maybe full-time life is not for you in this video I'm gonna go over some different areas of concern that may be something to think about before jumping into RV life this is a very hands-on life. You definitely are going to be doing physical things. You're going to be bending and kneeling and lifting and carrying every time you set up and break camp. You have to take out and put away your sewer hose and your water hose, your electrical cord, folding up the patio mat. You're also probably going to need to climb on the roof just to inspect it or to sweep off the slides. Or in my case, sometimes I put my Starlink up there. So you need to be in pretty good shape because you'll be doing these physical things on a regular basis, definitely on a travel day. Now you don't have to be handy, but it sure helps. In fact, there's a saying in RV life, you either become handy or you go broke. It helps to be able to know how to troubleshoot, to do minor repairs and preventive maintenance. I had to make a roadside repair when I had my fifth wheel. Here's the situation. I'm parked on the side of the road because I noticed something wrong with my hitch. I noticed that the trailer wasn't tracking with the truck. It actually was following me crooked. And I had to troubleshoot that on the side of the road. This is twisted. It should not be twisted. I was able to find out that it was the cup. It was a little loose and I had to loosen it more, straighten it and tighten it back up. And that involved unhitching the trailer to do that repair and hitching it back up. The roof on most motorhomes, travel trailers, and fifth wheels needs to be recalked every year. So you'll need to be able to get up there and do that caulking. And that's a simple thing, but you don't want to have to pay someone to do that because it's not that hard to do yourself. If you're not handy at all, be open to learning and growing as you do RV life. A sense of adventure. Well, that's probably the number one thing you need for RV life is to have that sense of, okay, I'm going to go out here. I'm going to explore it. It may be good. It may be bad. There may be mishaps. There may be repairs. There may be uh-ohs, but that's all part of the adventure. Oh, dear. If you have that good attitude or you can roll with the punches or no matter what happens, it's just part of the adventure, then you'll do fine with this life. You'll do more than fine. Be comfortable with uncertainty. I think this is a top requirement for RV life. It's all about uncertainty and not knowing. If you need predictability in your life, if you need to know what's around every corner, if you need no surprises, RV life may not be for you because you're gonna be going on unfamiliar roads to unfamiliar campgrounds and things may not work out the way you want them to. So it really helps to be comfortable with the not knowing and be comfortable with things that may turn out differently than you expected. If you're a couple, you both need to be on board for this life. You both need to be all in. You don't want to have one half of the couple just kind of being there for the ride, but not really wanting to be doing this. And you need to agree on the itinerary and how fast you want to move. I met a couple who said, okay, we're on the West Coast and we know by the end of the year we want to be on the East Coast. But John wanted to go the North route and Georgette wanted to go the Southern route. And I checked in with them a few months later and I said, well, what did you decide? And she said, well, we're still trying to figure out if we're going to go the North route or the South route. Now that turned out to be okay for them and they got through it and it wasn't a problem. But that's something for you to be aware of as a couple. How easily do you make decisions? How easily do you compromise? Can you designate someone as the trip planner, as the decision maker? 
how will you decide on the itinerary? And I'd say probably the biggest challenge as a couple is how well do you live in small spaces? Now, if you're the kind of couple where you have a great big sprawling house and you're always spread out and you really don't spend that much time together, you might want to take a couple test drives with an RV, go out for the weekends, rent one, and kind of test the waters first and see because it can be challenging. I think it takes a special kind of couple to be able to live in a couple hundred square feet or less and to be able to do it well. It helps to have shared interests, but it also helps to have individual interests so you can give each other space. It can get lonely on the road whether you are a couple or solo. Your social life and having a sense of community is probably the biggest challenge for most people because you've left your friends, your family, your community behind. I have a friend who's solo and she's fine going a month without having any contact with another person. Me, I do like to talk to people pretty much on the daily, but that's why I travel in campgrounds. I can go out and take a walk and I can meet people and start talking right away. Making friends easily and getting involved in the community can be the answer. A lot of campgrounds have things like bingo and other activities that you can take part in and there are things that you can do as you travel in your RV to be more connected. I just talked to Adrian and Dave who travel with their church as a group as RVers and they do construction. Habitat for Humanity has an RV program so you might want to check that out if you want to do some volunteer work and meet some people. It helps to be a minimalist to do this life. Just be aware of what you need that makes you happy. I started this life in a camper van and I quickly realized that I missed cooking. I missed some of the things that I wanted to have with me that there just wasn't room for in the van. So I went and got a 30 foot fifth wheel and now I have a 38 foot motor home. Think about what brings you joy and how you might be able to do that while you're on the road. Well, it's super important to make sure that you have enough money to afford to do RV life and that you can enjoy it while you're doing it. You don't want to be stressed out about finances. I recently did a video how I can camp in nice campgrounds for an average of just $2 a night. So you might want to check out that video. I also did a video a few months ago about how you can boondock in quartzite with access to a water and a dump station for seven months for a total of $180. Even so, you'll want to have some extra funds set aside for emergencies. What if your camper breaks down and you've got to live in a hotel while it gets repaired? Maybe there's a family emergency you'll want to fly home for. Maybe there's a wedding you'll want to attend that also involves a flight. So you'll definitely want to make sure that you have enough money set aside so that you can relax and just enjoy RV life. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Let me know if RV life is for you or not for you, and any tips that I may have missed, I'd love to hear it. As always, these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing.